always the way I like to proceed. But we wanted to put everything in front of you so you can feel comfortable when you change the map to allow the TOD and VC that you know what you're going to get because there's an approved site plan. And we'll, we'll get into that. So we ask, ask that you act on both together after the public hearings are closed and you can set effective dates for each as you deem appropriate um, the, for the site plan to follow the effective date of the mapping. Um, Beth, can you allow me to share my screen? Is that allowed? That appears to be muted. Yeah. Beth. Where is Beth? She's muted and there's no video anymore. Hold on, I'm going to send a chat to her. I'm sending a chat over. So how about them Yankees, guys? <laughs> I like your hair, Penny. Looks Thank good. You. Thank you. You should see it when I come back from a walk. In the weather, it's like... Well, we're all, you know, getting a little shaggy, but yours yes. seems to look nice. Thank you. Little shaggy. Nancy, do you want to give Beth a call? Oh, there she is. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to step away. Beth, could you allow me to share my screen, please? Yes. Um... How do I do it again, Peter? <laughs> Probably right click on me. And right, I, I there I am. Okay, share screen. No, right click. Uh, okay, if I'm gonna share the screen. So you wanna allow me to share my screen? Beth, if you hand him presenter rights, he can do it. If I get, make him a host? Yep, exactly. Thanks, Rich. Yep. Sorry, I got thrown off by the dog. <laughs> okay, Peter, you should be able to do it now. Okay, I got it. Um, so this is the Google Street Maps view. The property in question consists of a single parcel of land containing 0.36 acres. It's improved with a house that was built, according to Pat Wilde, between 1858 and 1867. You can see the house there. I'm going to turn as we head up South Street. There's Rob Schweitzer's old stomping grounds. You can see in the back on Taylor Avenue, a red house that was built in 1799. With nothing in between. There used to be a barn there, but there isn't. Across the street, we have some similar similar construction homes, and then we have the Verde Woodworking Building, the railroad tracks, the old train station, and Agway up that way. It's bounded on two sides by roads, Taylor Avenue and South Street, uh, and the Metro North Railroad tracks run directly next to the property, um, which are then uh, in turn adjacent to Agway. You can see the Agway parking lot there. Um, the house itself is, in my opinion, rather nondescript. It's a fairly simple farmhouse style. Pat Wild again said between 1858 and 1867, we asked him to prepare a report because we were suggesting that we demolish the building and replace it with new construction. We wanted to make sure we weren't going to be destroying any particularly important historic resources. He prepared a report and it's in the materials submitted to you. His conclusion was there's no evidence of anything of significant and historic importance is associated with this building. So we thank Pat for his report. Um, nevertheless, we did want to make sure that uh, in designing the new building, we came up with a building idea and concept that felt like it fit in a historic neighborhood. So now I'll switch to that while I talk for a little while. That's our proposed building uh, on this site. We looked at a number of different ways to approach the development of the property. There is a prior approval for three units, um, but these are rather large condominium units of 1850, 2400, and 2400 square feet, respectively. Um, we looked at using the Affordable Housing Appeals Act 
um, to get a whole bunch of units, but felt that we didn't really want to build the number of units that would be required to make that kind of a project work with that number of affordable units. So we arrived at looking at the TOD, which allows for 30 units per acre um, with the requirement that uh, if you have over five, you have to provide some affordable units. And what worked for this site is 10 units. As Beth noted, two of those would be affordable. We think that's a reasonable density for the downtown uh, and it allows us to propose 10 600 square foot units. That's the plan for these. So the existing zoning is bright red for RMO. You can see that it is um, bordered by the gray industrial zone, which is all of the, the area to the south. And in fact, this property itself used to be in the industrial zone until it was changed to RMO. Um, that connects it with the rest of what's on Taylor Avenue, which is basically all industrial. It is located just outside the adopted TOD overlay district boundaries. The Verde Woodworking property across the street is within the boundary, uh, but we happen to be without. Now if I can get to, this is the Bethel Forward Master Plan. The boundary I'm gonna draw with my arrow essentially goes like this around the other side of the street. But as you can see, and as Beth mentioned, a number of the maps in the, uh, in the plan show development and redevelopment of this particular property. You can see these four or five house structures here proposed for, um, for, for this property. So we believe that the, the TOD master plan incorporated in the plan of conservation and development as it is, um, provides guidance that makes it appropriate for the TOD to be applied to this property. Um, back to the zoning map, the VC district is the light green, that's village center. The Verde woodworking property, again, directly across the street is in VC, as is the train station parcel. And so we have a logical extension of the VC to cover our property. Logically, it would make sense to put the Agway property and the property owned by Boughton into the VC as well at some point um, because of the way those properties function with respect to the rest of the downtown. As you head up um, east, I guess, on South Street, there's the large cemetery and the firehouse, um, which doesn't really matter what zone those are in for the moment. Um, we've asked that the underlying zone be changed as well as the TOD overlay be applied because of an inconsistency in the language of the TOD zone, where it may or may not, depending on how you wanna argue it, be linked to the density in the underlying zone. So by putting it in the VC, we can take advantage of the 30 units an acre, uh, which allows the 10 units on the property without any questions about interpretation. Um, the standard for a zone map amendment is of course that the, the amendment be in accordance with a comprehensive plan and I think the information I just outlined show, uh, shows you that it would be in accordance with the comprehensive plan of the downtown as laid out on the ground. Uh, in addition, you have to make findings that it's in accordance with the plan of conservation and development. Uh, the TOD plan is incorporated into your plan of conservation and development, and therefore we believe it's in accordance with that as well. The TOD boundary uh, as I noted, was drawn across the street, and that is based on a five or 10 <coughs> walk. I went to uh, Google Maps and I asked Google Maps to show me how to walk to the train station from this property. And that is essentially the blue dots. And what it's telling you is to walk through the old train station property, up School Street to uh, Library Place to School Street, and then on to Durant and up to the um, uh, train station. And I think there's sidewalks all the way or at least there will be. Um, Google says it's 0.6 miles and 12 minutes to do that walk. So uh, even though the plan talks about a five minute circle and a 10 minute circle, it's uh, well established that TOD should function at a 15 minute interval. Um, and that's where within that, I suppose for most people to make that walk in 12 minutes. Um, so if my memory serves me during the discussion of the TOD adoption, 
this, the question of whether this property in Agway and Boughton should be put into the TOD was <coughs> a conversation. And my recollection is that it was deferred. It was, uh, let's just do what we're gonna do now and we'll worry about that later. Um, but I don't think there was any decision to specifically reject them as not appropriate for TOD. So again, we submit the proposed zoning map amendment will be in accordance with a comprehensive plan and the plan of conservation and development and should be approved. Um, I guess we should go on to the site plan and we'll get through that and maybe do all the questions at the same time, if that's okay. Yes. There's a couple of items for me to address on the site plan. First. In the health department report, item one, <coughs> the health department claims that it is a standard practice to obtain a phase one environmental report. We respectfully disagree. We don't believe it's a standard practice at all. And in fact, we avoid it if we at all possibly can. Um, we would only ever do a phase one if this were a property that we knew had a history of pollution or discharge, if it were an industrial property, if our bank for financing told us we had to do it, um, only then would we have a phase one done. This property has been residential as long as anybody can remember, and so we don't think there's any indication that a phase one would be appropriate. <clears throat> it may be that when we go get construction financing that the bank will say, no, we need you to do a phase one, but it's just as likely they may say to us, you need to do an environmental screening, which is a much shorter report. And it just says one or two pages that, you know, nothing to worry about here. And we'll obviously provide those to the health department uh, when we get them, but we don't think it's something we need to do at this time. In the Wright Pierce report on site plan items one and two, there were a couple of questions raised regarding the survey. I reached out to Zach Rapp to review them. He's the surveyor and he will prepare an updated topographic survey um, he thinks there was just a timing issue with one of the items and he knows how to clarify the other item. So with that, I'd like to ask Kurt Verde of Verde Properties to present the architecture of the building. I'm gonna put it up on my screen again and try to follow along with what Kurt is talking about. So he's got some assistance. Kurt. Does he need to be unmuted? Yes, try. <coughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, we are proposing an architecturally correct building which will seamlessly fit into the fabric of downtown. We've thoughtfully designed a, a traditional colonial style building, which will certainly make for a much stronger and more interesting downtown Bethel. This style of architecture dates back hundreds of years and examples of this architectural style can be seen throughout the surrounding towns, including Bethel. Our design intent is timeless and slightly understated. Is he muted again? He looks no, like he froze. Sure. The elevation. Right. You said, you said timeless and understated, Kurt. <laughs> and then you froze. All right. Our design and ten. Yeah, you're frozen again. <laughs> we'll try this one more time. How about now? We can hear you. Okay. Our design intent is timeless and slightly understated, however, historically correct. The elevations and the massing are purposely simple. We have achieved good scale along with good function. We have enclosed all of the stairs for enhanced aesthetics as well as safety for the end user. We have designed and implemented traditional details which complement and complete the entire package. That's what we have. So let me, let me run through the renderings on my screen. The one that you see here is the front rendering. East and west elevation in drawing form. I can zoom in a little bit. And those are both the elevations. 
Um, if I can go to the plans. Kurt, do you want to take through a little bit about how the various units will be um, accessed? Sure, happy to. Okay, I think um, the main feature would be this uh, central vestibule, uh, which will allow access. Oh, first of all, you walk into that vestibule and that will be the only section of the building that will have a full basement. In the basement, we'll have a uh, washer dryer, uh, the water meters, the meter rooms, and any other mechanicals. Mm -hmm. All right, the two stairs go up to four units. And from that vestibule, you'll be able to access four units. So that's a very significant part of the accessibility. It'll also allow you to flow through from the parking lot to the front sidewalk on South Street and, uh, and back and forth. So that's a, that's a nice element architecturally. Um, the, then you'll see there are three other stairs, enclosed stairs, one in the rear, okay? And that will allow you to access one unit. We have the enclosed stair to the left which is adjacent to the railroad tracks. <clears throat> uh, what we've decided to do there is um, construct the, both the stair enclosure and the exterior walls of that portion right there exactly with a uh, sound attenuation insulation in response to one of the items um, on the, let's see, which report was that? Item number three of the health report was a, a well-taken comment. Uh, our plans to mitigate sound from the train, which we find to be not so disturbing as we've been there a long time. Um, it might be a nice uh, feature for the, for the tenants. So just to summarize the four central units, that's the two on the first floor and the two on the second floor are accessed via the vestibule. Correct. And then the end unit here and the one above it are accessed either by the stairs or by a door next to the stairs. Correct. This unit here is accessed either by stairs or a door next to the stairs. And the same thing on the, and the same thing on the end unit. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, Doug, you're up. I think uh, Beth, you have to let Doug share his screen. <laughs> pull my drawings up. <clears throat> can everyone see that drawing or not? Not yet. No, maybe you can't because I'm on my PDF here. All right, is it the iPhone, Doug, or is it the no. screen? It's my um, desktop. It's your desktop? Yeah. Peter, do you have that up on your screen there? I just made you host. Try it again. No, I don't think it's going to work. All right. I will, I'll call it up. Give me one second. Yeah, call you. Uh, Doug, I, I tried to make you host, but now you got to make me host again to be able to screen share it. And how do I do that? Right click on me and say make host. There. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to zoom into the colored piece of it there. Doug. There you go. Perfect. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. Yep. 
I'd like to introduce Doug DeVesta, our civil engineer, to go through the civil engineering aspect and respond to the comments. Doug. Okay, good evening, Doug DeVesta, professional engineer, represent the applicant. Um, we were asked to lay out a site plan for um, 80 South Street there, utilizing the footprint that uh, Kurt Verde provided to us. Uh, so what we provided is a uh, parking lot coming off of Taylor Avenue uh, to 18 parking spaces um, with one handicapped space. Um, we provided sidewalks along Taylor Avenue and South Street and with an interior sidewalks um, around the building to the various entrances to the, uh, the units. Um, we provided street trees along South Street, an existing tree that will, will remain. Then we're providing trees at each end of the parking um, parking lot. Uh, we're also providing a dumpster pad for the uh, trash removal from the unit itself. Uh, we were also asked to look at the um, storm drainage, storm stormwater management for the site. Um, we're providing a catch basins on the south side and north side of the parking lot. Everything will be drained. The high point on the center will be drained to the catch basins on either side. Then that will be drained into a manhole where it will be manifolded into um, a detention system consisting of four by four galleries, two rows of four by four galleries, which will infiltrate into the ground with access points at the end there for uh, cleaning out. Um, we utilized the TR55 method to determine the volume of runoff. We looked at the pre-development conditions, which consist of the, of the a lawn area, a uh, gravel driveway, on, and the um, existing house. We took a difference between the, between the two, pre and post, and came up with the determination of the volume of uh, runoff uh, for the site. Um, we utilized a um, infiltration rate based on what we did out across the street at the Verde Woodworking facilities there to design a detention system. Um, we'll go through the comments from um, Wright Pierce and then we'll go back into this. Um, so what we're looking at again, two rows of four by four galleries to handle the runoff from the roof areas, um, part of the parking, um, all the parking lot and part of the uh, uh, sidewalks that are draining towards the, the parking lot itself. Um, we went to the PUC um, back in March um, 16th, 2020. We got an approval for an increase in um, uh, sewage flow to 600 gallons. We based that on the number of units um, and then we, we deducted the amount of flow coming from the existing uh, residents. So therefore we, we asked the PUC for 600 gallons uh, increase in sewage flow and we were granted that. Um, the and the sewer line is located right here on South Street. And there's actually two laterals coming into the property with one serving the house and maybe one just a stub um, for something in the future. So it may have been two lots at one time, but now it's combined as one. Um, water is located on South Street. So we'll be tying into um, into the building, as Kurt mentioned, uh, in the vestibule, there's a, a full basement, which where the water line will come in. There'll be two lines. One will be the um, domestic service, and one will be a six inch line to service for a sprinkler system, and then metered out from there into each individual um, units. Um, erosion control, very simple, still fence along the perimeter of the property with the stockpile area um, on the south end of the proposed parking area. Um, catch basins will consist of uh, hay bales around, around the outside with the um, grates being wrapped with filter fabric. Uh, we felt that's a very, it's a good way to handle the um, runoff during construction and any segment may be occurring. Um, do you want me to go through each of the comments now, Peter? No, I think in general, you can just summarize what we're going to do about them. I just want you to talk a little bit about the stormwater uh, elements of the letter. Okay. okay. Um, we received um, Wright Pierce's comments this morning. I've had a chance to go through them. Um, what we're proposing to do, uh, the first item they talked about, um, the 20, handling the full 25-year design storm. Um, 
I don't really agree with that process, um, but what, we, what we'll propose to do is take our detention system, there's two rows now, we're gonna double the size of this. And we also, um, we took a conservative of approach with the infiltration rate utilizing the, um, taking five times the, the actual infiltration rate that we got across the street, which we'll, we'll do an in situ testing out there. Um, conservative rate of 15 minutes, uh, using dropping at four inches per hour um, were, were, were the um, 2004 stormwater management guides tells us to be two times the, in, the um, field measured uh, infiltration rate. So I was very conservative. So we're gonna go back and go at two times the infiltration rate required by the um, 2004 stormwater management uh, manual. So again, we'll be increasing this detention system by two more rows. So we'll have a total of four rows at 40 linear feet each with 12 inches of stone around the outside. And at that point, we'll be able to detain around 7,100 cubic feet of water. And that will handle just about the full 25 years storm uh, that Wright Pierce was asking us about. Um, another thing they asked us about was um, you know, providing some kind of you know, stormwater management um, for treatment of the runoff. Um, each catch basin and the manhole here, we each have a two foot sump in there to collect any solids and sediments um, before going out into the detention system. So we have three, you know, again, two foot sump, two foot sump, and a two foot sump here. So we've got plenty of capacity for any silts and sands that might get out into the system. Also on the two catch basins, and we'll have a hood on there, and that will collect um, and trap any floatables, um, oils and greases, any kind of uh, trash that may get into the catch basin system before it gets out in the system. So we feel that's a um, adequate method of handling any sediments and trapping any oils getting out into the system itself. Um, let's see what else they talk about. Um, again, we'll, we'll be doing on-site uh, detention um, test holes within the detention system and a percolation rate there. So we'll, we'll verify um, any the soils in that condition. But knowing the area, I believe this area will be all sand and gravel because across the street has sand and gravel, and then two doors down the Birdies properties is all sand and gravel. So we'll we'll verify that with through through test holes. Um, they brought up a point on the site on the site plan. Uh, comments number three about the building being within 13 feet of the um, of the retaining wall that's on the railroad property right in here. So this corner here is about 13 feet. They're saying um, again what we talked about was the um, only full basement will be in the vestibule between the two buildings there, and this would be um, slab on grade with a 42 inch frost frost wall. So really, any excavation in this area is minimal. And we feel that this will not impact the um, retaining wall there. And the other place would be where the dumpster pad is. It's about six feet away. Again, this is only a minimal amount of excavation and slab on grade uh, for the dumpster pad itself. Um, that's really majority, you know, every other comments are just really just clarifications and, modif and, mo and, and minor modifications to the plan itself. Um, they asked for a guide rail along the parking lot right here within the safety zone. Um, I don't agree the with them. Doug, Doug, do you mean in the middle of the parking lot? No, up here where the uh, park, north parking, uh, parking area and the sidewalk is. Right, here. right there, Peter, yep, right through there. They asked for a guide rail there uh, within the three foot safety zone. Uh, that's where the three foot safety zone is. So a car can overhang by two feet and still not impact the, um, the sidewalk. Uh, besides that, there is a six inch curb being proposed along that side to act as, as, a, as a wheel stop. So um, I don't think that's necessary to have another guide, a guide rail there. Um, the other comments are again, we'll, wrap, we'll, we'll prepare a written statement um, addressing all these comments um, and submit that back to uh, the Beth, which can re return them over to uh, Wright Pierce for their comments again. Uh, that Thanks, concludes Doug. what I had to say. Uh, anything else you want me to discuss or not? 
not at the moment. Um, as Doug said, what we will do is take all these comment letters, put together responses and submit them with revised plans as needed. The one comment letter we don't have is anything on the architectural review. Um, we would love to be able to get responses back in time to be on the June 9th agenda. Um, so get to work, Alyssa. <laughs> Um, but that's all we have for tonight. Um, we're happy to answer any questions um, from the commission or members of the public. Uh, Peter, it's Pat. How close is the property line of this to where Pat Wild's old house and driveway were? How far back does it go to his house? Um, if you look on this plan, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Uh, Doug, correct me if I'm wrong, but this note right here says frame dwelling number six, I think. Yes, it is. You're right. That's the location of the red oh. house. So the distance from here to here is how is many? about feet? 20 feet. Hmm. It's about 20 feet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so as I said, we're happy to answer any questions. All right, uh, we will put this out to the public first. If there are any questions, if you would raise your hand here on Zoom. There don't appear to be any questions, Peter. No. <laughs> All right, then we'll move to uh, commission members, Kitty. Uh, actually, but the questions I had, you answered. I, I love the staircases being inside. Uh, I was wondering where the laundry room was, and that's been taken care of. And the privacy pet is uh, clearly marked. And I, I think it's a, a beautiful building so far. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Penny. Okay. A um, couple of questions. First of all, um, being a... 30 something year newcomer to Bethel. Can, can you explain what the Bowton property is and where that is? Sure. Um, our property, can you see this map? That yes. Up here? Our property is this red um, right. trapezoid right here. Yep. Railroad tracks are here. Agway is this large piece here. Mm -hmm. And then the Bowton property owned by Bowton right now is this tiny little triangle here. It's a white house. Oh, okay. It has very little land associated. The next parcel, this large one, is yeah. the cemetery. And then the next one over to the right is the firehouse. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, All right. It's this firehouse. And I don't know who owns these in the back. Fire, fire department probably owns one of them. Okay. Um, is there any thought, does anybody know, of making, if you go back to that, um, to where you, to the uh, slide that you were at before, showing where you were, okay, thanks. So immediately behind the trapezoid property is sort of like a triangle-ish kind of thing. Um, is there any thought of bringing that into the, um, the VC with, the, with the, uh, the TOG with the VC overlay? So from our perspective, it's not part of our application, so it can't be acted on as part of this. Okay. I think that it's a 1799 house. Mm -hmm. And so while we made the argument to you that our house is not particularly historically important, um, I think there may be a different answer with respect mm -hmm. to that house. I, I can't analyze that. I'm not an expert, mm -hmm. although the person that prepared the report for us was the former owner of that house. And so he right. had a different opinion as okay. to the significance of it. Uh, I, I think there's interesting questions to be asked about how much of the industrial zone down here belongs in the TOD. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, sure, one or two more properties, you're not talking additional distance, right? much additional distance to the train station, but how far do you go? Do you go all the way down right. this big one here, which is the mother load, which is someday Vanderbilt Chemical goes out of business and this becomes... Right nice housing instead of right. polluting. Understood. 
you know, I, I don't know how to answer those questions because that's not what we're looking at tonight. Sure. No, I appreciate but that. But it's good, thought, good, good thinking and future planning, I guess is how right. it's. Um, another question. I may have missed this, but are there any entrances that are on street level? Yes. Um, we didn't put any entrances in the front. So let me go to the other architecture. Okay. These are the two elevations. Right. So, okay, I, I take it back. There's, there, there, we didn't put any entrances on the main buildings here, this mm -hmm. large building and this large building. There is one front entrance here that enters to the vestibule, which as we noted, serves this unit, this unit, this unit, and this unit, the kind of the four central ones. Okay. So this uh, unit here, yeah. the upstairs, downstairs, you can enter the front and go up the stairs and in, and then the entrance to the other unit is in the back. On the ground the floor. On the right side, on the ground floor, yeah. Okay, terrific. And thank you. And where, compared to the street level entrances, where is the handicapped parking? Um, let me go back to Doug's plan. And so the handicap entrance is here. The handicap parking space is here. Where is some? Um, can't see it yet either. either. Okay, oh, no, give no, it a second. That's okay. Do you have the plan up now? No. No. Huh. What do you see on your screen? Oh, um, the, the architectural, the, the rendering of the um, elevations. Okay, it's just going slow then. Let me try to stop sharing and reshare. Hmm. How about now? Uh, there we go. Yep. There it is. Okay, so the parking lot's in the rear, accessed off of Taylor Avenue. The handicapped spot is the last spot, number nine. Okay. From here on the sidewalk, you can walk around to the right and enter one, the lower unit here. Mm-hmm. Um, and the stairs are on the front and they enter the upper unit. Okay. Oh, I have that right. I may have it backwards, but as to which one's where. But one of them's over here. One of the entrances is right here. Mm -hmm. And the same thing to get up to the second floor for that unit. Okay. And then this unit on the end, they're all here. Otherwise, you're going into the vestibule. Okay, terrific. Are there steps leading into the vestibule? I don't think so. Doug, can you answer that? No, no, there's not. All right, okay. terrific. Um, I'm just assuming that eight, I think you said 18 parking spaces. Yes. Is that what's permitted yes. for 10 units? Yes. Um, and it seems to me space wise that 20 feet to the house in back to the 1799 house seems like not very much space. Well, I think I'd say two things about that. First is it's not between buildings. There's a parking lot there. Okay. Um, there's an entire parking lot. So you're talking, you know, another 60 feet or so to 70 okay. feet to the building. All right. And second, you have to remember this is the downtown. Um, the, the houses are close together. Right. You know, um, I just shared the Google Street View. I'm not sure if that came up. Right. No, I had seen that. Yeah. If you, look, if you look just across the street at how close those houses are together. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Okay, that's all I've got. Thank you, Peter. Uh, Peter, I'd like to make, make a point here. There is yes. a privacy fence uh, yep. between the parking lot and the property line. Six feet. Right. So we get about six feet there. So it's about 25 feet from the parking lot to the building itself, but there's a six foot privacy fence. And that's um, this line the... with little squares? Correct. Yeah, right oh, okay, great. All right, thank you. That's it. Uh, Ken. Hi. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, on the corner of uh, the property right by the railroad tracks, there's a couple of large uh, either arborvitaes or cedars. Are you going to be able to save those? Um, Doug, maybe you can answer that based on your plan. I only see one. In the hemlock. Being the hemlock is going to stay right there in a the corner. Okay. 
Uh, second question. Hang on, hang on, Ken, before you move on. I just want to make sure I understand what you're talking about. So which is the hemlock, I guess, is the question. Is that it's that corner right there, Peter? Right here? Okay. It's, lab it's labeled 12, 12 inch hem hemlock. Yeah, so this one will save the rest, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, second question is, can you give me or us a percentage of total green space versus non-green space? Doug, that'll be in your bailiwick. I don't know if you can do that off the top of your head. My percentages, you want no, actual numbers. Either one. I'll get back to you then. Okay, thank you. Hmm. That's it. There you go. So we'll have to work on that. Paul, do you want, want me to answer it now? Or you want me to wait at, at the next oh, meeting? Sure, go ahead. Can you answer it now? Well, I'll well, c c continue on and I'll. Okay. Yeah, good idea. I'm all set. Thanks, Ken. Uh, Bob Legner. Okay, uh, I think it's a very good plan for, for that piece of property. I only have one comment. I did go to the police commission hearing that they had the other night and they discussed this. And their big concern seemed to be the turning radiuses into Taylor Avenue. And, and if there was some way that this plan was going to improve those turning radiuses and get rid of the old telephone pole that's on the opposite corner that burned in the fire many years ago. Because they said that when people drive up there to turn in, they're out in the other lane, a lot of times the bigger trucks. So I, I think uh, that that was their only big concern. Otherwise, they they thought uh, you know the plan would work quite well. So Doug, you're going to have to talk about the turning radii that you put on the plans. Hey, can, you, can you can you could you pull that up, please? Yes, it's to the it's to the right of the plan. There we go. Right here. Yep. Okay. So what we got here is we've got a truck sitting at the stop stop bar and then you see the dashed lines those are the those are the um the truck tires going around the corner there and you go to the one below it peter and now this is the truck coming from tip from south street onto taylor and again the dashed lines are the are the tracks for the um the wheels going around the corner there. So I guess the concern, Bob, was for the coming on Taylor to south to south. From south on to Taylor, turning okay. in, into, into, into Taylor, I believe, from both directions. Okay. Well, we're not changing. I mean, the, they the will probably make it part of their report. The geometry of the of the Intersection is, is is what it is. I mean, we're not changing any of the property line stuff like that. So really, that the Taylor, the in, the geometry is what it is. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know what we can do to to modify that at all. Um, so, I think we've got we we got a hydrant. We have a hydrant right on the corner of Taylor and South on on Taylor Avenue there. So that's 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 really going to change. That we can't change that geometry. There's a utility pole on the um, north and west corner of Taylor and, and, and South and South Street there. Um, so that there's those issues there we have to deal with. Um, I, we only looked at it in terms of you know going from Taylor to South, uh, South Street heading in an easterly direction, and then same thing coming out of, out of Taylor going in an easterly direction onto South Street. Yeah, just to be clear, we can't do anything about the telephone pole on the property next door on the other side of the street. I, I understand. I just on the property or the pole, so <laughs> coming down the line. Yeah. The police report. So Bob, they're questioning something that has always existed. Right. A little late. We don't have the report yet, King. Yep. 
Probably it's existed since electricity was invented. <laughs> exactly. It's always been a tight turn. So yeah, we, we did do some uh, mitigation on our site to deal with sight lines and this and this hydrant. Mm -hmm. And obviously the removal of this tree will help that as well. But our sidewalks come around that hydrant basically. Right. Mm -hmm. I'll just move it back so you can see those sidewalks. Doug, did you get a green space answer yet? We've got um, uh, one three divide. We've got about thirty five percent green space. So we have point three. Let's see, point one three times forty three five sixty. We have about 5,662 square feet of, of lawn, and we've got um, 0.237 times 43,560, and we've got 10,332 um, impervious area. So it's about, what I say it was, um, 0.367, got about 35% is green space. Thank you. Okay, Pat, you want to move them, move along? Bob, do you have any more questions? No, I'm good. I, I'm good. Okay, uh, Rich Tibbetts. Uh, <clears throat> no additional questions for me. Um, I think it looks. I think it's a good-looking building and good use of that space. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Thank Rich. You. Mm -hmm. Linda. Well, uh, Penny was kind enough to ask all my questions, and they were very nicely answered. So uh, thank you on that. Uh, <laughs> I think this property makes a, a lot of sense to be included in the TOD plan, and I like the looks of it. So I have no further questions. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Rob Wallace. Sorry, had to unmute there. Uh, no, I, um, I have no... Uh, significant uh, significant questions related to the proposal. Um, just out of curiosity, and maybe somebody can refresh my memory, is there uh, street parking on either of those streets? No. No, I, di I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. Could not get the trucks there if there were. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, so I have no other questions. This has been, uh, been quite informative. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Rob. And I have no questions. Beth, any comments? Um, just very briefly for Doug, the differences in the parking area between this and across the street, you designed the Verde property? Correct. On, on that particular property, it, it's a larger piece. You had 26 more parking spaces. What kind of, how many galleries were proposed for there? If uh, we didn't, we didn't propose galleries over there. Right. We did a, we did a center. We did, we have everything draining to the center utilizing um, pavers and utilizing um, a stone infiltration uh, bed there. But you didn't feel that something like that would work on this site or the compromise was using some of the pavers that you have coming in and out of the driveway? On this one here, you mean? Yeah. I just felt that using a gallery system would have been you know, a, an appropriate use for this property here. I mean, you think you're thinking something differently, think I'm using a pavers again like that? Well, I mean, to add four more, now, now you have to put in four more galleys in order four to make a 25 year, you, you have to put in two more galleys, making it a total of four to meet the right. 25 year. Right. Well, that's, see, that's, that, that's where I have my problem with this. When, when, when Wright Pierce reviewed the property across the street, um, one, one of the, you know, Todd is no longer there. And I think Barry's the other one. Um, there really was no issues with the way I did my calculations. Right. Um, now, now with 
with Todd gone and these other two gentlemen reviewing it, um, was it Barry and Joe? Well, Joe, Joe reviewing Joe. it. Now, now there's there's a they want me to design for a full 25 year design storm. Okay. Um, I, I really don't. We, that's something we should discuss. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I, typically, when you do something like this, you look at pre-development, post-development, and you, and you really start start the difference. And that's Correct. what we're doing. Correct. Okay. And, and and your typical storms, you know, a typical rain rain event is, you know, half inch, an inch of rain. Again, we might get up to two inches in, in a short period of time, um, but getting you know, getting a a full twenty five year storm, um, we may get those things, but that's over a twenty four hour period. Right. Uh, so so there's time for that water to infiltrate into the ground. Uh, that's why I don't agree with with their with their comments. So I'm just trying to address their comments. So keep this project moving forward. Okay. All right. And Peter, as far as um, the architecture, uh, we just recently finalized the contract with Alyssa, um, who's now on her own. And I'll be speaking with her tomorrow. Okay. And hopefully we can set something up between uh, all of us to discuss it further. Could we do a Zoom meeting with That's what I'm Katie hoping. and Alyssa, me and you? Yeah. Because I, 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 as I mentioned in my memo, there's some de there's more detail that is needed on the drawings as far as the um, materials, things like that, because we have run into problems with two previous applications in regards to that. Got it. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks, Beth. All right, so uh, this public hearing will be continued to June 9th while we're awaiting other reports. Thank you all. Peter, Peter don't leave. How do I get back my host? <laughs> or else you're going to stay here all night. Definitely not going to do that. Okay. Oh, come on. Beth, you want everything. I mean, I'll leave the camera posted, you know, oh, on my nice brick wall. But Well, Beth, you're hosting now. I'm all set. Okay. Could be okay. Good. Next on our Thank agenda is our business meeting, and I'd like to seat Rob Wallace for Steve Duchel. If everyone's had an opportunity to read the meeting minutes, if I may have a motion. Motion to approve the minutes of our last meeting. Kidding? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, Beth, do we have to call out each person to get an approval on this? No. It's okay. the minutes. I'm sorry, I, and I didn't hear who seconded that. Was it uh, Penny? Penny did. Penny. You're all on audio, so for example, if somebody wanted to abstain or vote no, perfect. Have them just perfect. All right. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Uh, we have no work sessions. Uh, planning and zoning department report. Beth, that's you. Yep, and um, if you drive up and down to town, you'll see some pretty cool um, outdoor eating areas. Um, we've been working for the last two weeks with everybody. Um, I, w I don't know, I guess 30, 40 different restaurants. Yeah. And um, everybody, uh, there's two left. We have to go over to House of Yushita tomorrow to finalize his layout over there. And, um, and that's, you know, it's going very well. Um, just a reminder, Tapu, when a restaurant has um, a full restaurant on premises, they happen to have a food truck. We are allowing them to have the food truck on the premises too. Yeah. Um, so Tapu does, is using the food truck until the 1st of November. Um, food trucks are not allowed here in town. Mm -hmm. And that's the only exception to the rule. Um, the, uh, I had one question for you in regards to that. It came up in discussion in the front office that, um, uh, did Bob leave? No, you're there. I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed things here. But anyways, um, the uh, broken symmetry, when broken symmetry was redesigned for restaurant use, it had an outdoor patio, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Outdoor yep. patio. Mm -hmm. Outdoor patio also included the bad canopy that was in disrepair. She could not use 
that broken canopy or put people underneath there. Well, the canopy we finally finished, it took, it was a two year project and she has started to use that for um, her business. That's just an extension of what you all previously approved, correct? I'm just yeah. asking for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all I wanted to do with that. Unfortunately, I had to bring it to your attention because it was just basic, yes, but there was some disagreement with some members of the public. Um, as far as our uh, June meeting, um, we had originally scheduled the public hearings for Shelley Road and Goodhill Road for the 29th of June, which is a Monday. So that should be changed to the 30th of June, which is a Tuesday. Okay. okay. We we're going to do a special meeting for that just to do those public hearings All right. and not do our regular business. So our regular business now, we do have the um, uh, South Street and we have 104 Worcester Street and those will be handled during our regular business meetings. Okay. okay. And, uh, and that's all I have for you right now, unless you have anything, any questions. Beth, um, Nache, they're not going to use their patio now, correct? Nache is, they have a use of their patio if they choose to use it. Um, they uh, did get an approval to put a bar out there. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they're still. Um, he was going to give it another week, I think. Before he was, he, he was trying to work more. with the health department and getting the bar approved. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the last I knew. And I just want to say thank you because I think you've allowed roadside signs on Greenwood Avenue that the restaurants tucked in the back and say that they're open. Yeah. They're in front of the Dolan Plaza. I think that's really nice. I mean, we have to, you know, I everybody agree. knows and we'll pay for it dearly next year. That's of course. Be of people coming in and wanting to do different things, which is fine, you know, but we have to. We got to get it. Yeah, yep. we gotta gotta keep everybody notified they're open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether sure. we agree with it or not, we have to give them the opportunity. Exactly. And the sign points, you know, whatever. Yep. A lot of blind eyes going on around here. I, I Nobody's ever been. No one's ever been killed by a sandwich board. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be, you clearly have never been in New York City. To um, my knowledge. <laughs> so. Beth, just to let you know that as um, Stan is president of the Village Square Condo Association, and there are two eating places in there. There is, um, I, I guess it's now got a new name. It used to be Lori's. Lori's, yeah. It, now apparently they finally came up with a new name. Good. And um, Sprouts. And Sprouts. And Stan got in touch. The minute he heard about this, he got in touch with them and said, just FYI, if you are looking to do outdoor kinds of things, you know, give the land use office, give, give them a call because this is something that you can now do. And um, Dong, the owner of Sprouts, put on Facebook that they're not going to open probably until the middle of June, right. period. Uh. Um, there may be, you know, a bucket of reasons for doing that. Um, but, you know, to try to spread the word, get, you know, like, we can do this. Right. right. Yeah, so, sure. That's all I have for you tonight, Pat. Okay. Um, any commissioner comments? I have a comment. Yes, Bob. Uh, I, I think somehow we ought to commend uh, Spovieros that did such a nice job on renovating the front property. Uh, I know that was part of their agreement once they got to put the two apartments in the back in the barn. And I think uh, yes. it's a good example of what we're looking for up and down Greenwood Avenue. Which building is that, Bob? Is that the old, where Ed's Barber Ed is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it looks great. Well, it does yeah. look good. Very good. Vita is yeah, the nail salon. How about a letter? Uh, I think a letter from uh, the Plan and Zoning or a letter from the sure. Land Use Office. Let, let's do it from you guys, because you're the ones that wrote the regs. Okay. <laughs> Planning and Autograph. Zoning. Autographed picture of from Bob. <laughs> you you usually, go. usually does it. Okay. You know what? I never say anything, but I, since we're talking about department um, stuff, I just want to point out that um, Fred Pollard has been doing a tremendous job with keeping up with all of the um, permits 
for sheds, pools, decks um, that have been coming in. Um, he is, he and I have a great working relationship. A lot of it, almost all of it is coming in right now via email. And um, he is right on top of it. And I'm grateful for his help because it's one less thing that Beth really has to you know, be engaged in. So I just wanted to let you all know that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I guess no other commissioner comments? If I may have a motion to adjourn, no, please. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm no. sorry. I see Betty's iPad in Romper Room. Mm. Oh. Ooh. Oh, my. <laughs> BJ? And a whole bunch. Hello. Uh, Hello. No, I don't Pat. Have any... BJ? I don't have any comments. Oops. Thank nice you. Nice hearing from you, though, BJ. Well, we just want to say thank you for being there. And I don't see anybody else. Does anybody see? I see Julia. I That's saw it. Pat and Trisha, Pat. but I see Pat Paraport. My two is in listening mode, so I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> hey Rob. Hey. <laughs> hey Rob, you want to say anything outside? Not about the public hearing. Oh no, I'm just you know just dropping in, seeing how things are going. You know, okay. seeing how things are going in the old neighborhood. We did Rob, where are you living now? Uh, right Thompson. on the street from me. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, I guess that's it. Okay. All right, if I may have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. With Penny, thank you. If I may have a second. 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 Was that you, Kitty, or Bob? First? Yes. Bob. Whatever. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Give it to Bob. He'll fight okay. you for it. Uh, all those in favor? We'll do that. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstention? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Good night, everybody. Bye.